What would be your advice for for founders that are in this current market? You know, the the hype is all gone. We're back to 2017 kind of you know fundraising market. What what would be your advice to to founders to you know either get into YC or you know to raise um, you know uh, and get attention from multiple VCs? So I think to, to unpack that, like number one regarding like getting into YC, I think it's I don't think we would be where we are if we didn't go to YC. Uh, I'm a big proponent of, uh, I know it's, some are, it's controversial on this. Like, I think the advice they give, they see so many companies left and right. They talk to so many people that do the same mistake because we do the same mistake. Like every founder does and it's normal, but they are really telling it to you how it is. They, they don't care if you don't follow the advice and they just see a lot. And so a lot of really good advice came came from, from YC. And so that was really helpful. Uh, and it helped us like put us on the map as well, uh, as a startup. So that's the first one in terms of advice. I think in this current market is difficult. Uh, I'd say a lot of people think of, yeah, ra- raising money is difficult if you don't have traction. So my biggest advice is you can still raise money if you don't have traction yet, because they don't expect you to have product market fit. Otherwise you would be at series A already. Right. What's the most important to me and what helped me the most is build the best team. Uh, I spend all my time, you were talking, my role is selling to VCs, but it's also selling to people to have the best people joining the company. And one leads to two, and then two leads to three, and then you're three people. So you're more attractive for people to come in. And so when you have a really strong profile, uh, it really creates like the, the best environment. It's like a journey you all take together. And that's, that's what I'm the most proud of for now. It's like the team I've assembled. Uh, and and tackling that challenge together. Uh, so my biggest focus, because doing it alone is, it's tough. Uh, so I have a co-founder, uh, be as fair as possible as your co-founder. So I told my co-founder that we, we're we splitting it half, half, uh, it, it's you and me, just because even if my brother come, it was as much work uh, from both sides and it's all about giving it your all. So. That, that would be my advice. Uh, focus on the team, be fair to people. Uh, it's all about like, if it's successful, it will be a huge success. It's all about maximizing your chance to success to me. And in order to do that, you want everybody is on board to be like 2000% on board. You want them to be able to call until like 11 PM on a Sunday, because it's a huge journey and like to be committed to it. You know, and I think that's, uh, incredibly valuable to talk about the team. Um, when it comes to pitching VCs and, you know, sharing the story and getting people riled up, VCs really do look like, can you, can you recruit, you know, recruit top talent? Yes or no. And if you're CEO and, you know, founder and you're not able to get great talent to the, you know, to the team, then that's a, you know, red flag to, to VC, especially in that kind of pre-seed stage or early stage where, you know, they're really betting on the team because your product may say you're going to do X, but then six months later down the road, that X doesn't work and you guys pivot to Y. You know, they're really betting on the on the team. I would say to, to add to that, uh, order of a YC batch, uh, so you're putting groups of like smaller and smaller group where we're 30 companies, I'd say about 30% have pivoted. And like most of the YC success, like Brex has pivoted, like Slack has pivoted. It was a game before, right? right? So it's, it, they, they should like the idea and the concept, but it's all about like the team and their ability to execute as well. And, and within that network, uh, you know, just kind of shed some light in terms of what goes on behind the scenes, you know, from a YC participation. Like, what's the community like uh, of fellow founders and, you know, how has that been impactful for, for you as an organization? I think the, 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 the thing that's the most helpful is like the, the relationship with the partner, but also like you're part of a group of, startup within the same industry. Uh, and so you talk, we, we still keep in touch to this day. We have monthlies uh, where if you want, you can join. If you don't want, you don't have to. And we just talk about the same challenges, the same struggle we're facing as well. And so it's it's really good in that sense. Um, I'd say the, yeah, that, that that's pretty much like the, the, the main value and it helps you like push you to, um, like they have tons of resources and they push you to uh to visibility for for investors and you know before we we wrap up here like what's some final words that you put out to to founders that are currently in this market right now um 
So one thing I wanted to to chat about uh, on this is like every single meeting counts as well. Uh, it's a very small world, and it's all about like at the end of the day perception uh, of the team uh, on this. So even if it's not the best investor you want and so on, like I would take every meeting as it's the most important one because everybody talks. And it's when one person starts, to, everybody's friends, uh, all the investors. And so when somebody starts to hear more and more about your company's name, they're like, oh, that's interesting. And so now they want it more. And it's, it's very similar to, nobody wants somebody who's like begging for money is like desperate, right? So that's why you want to be in a strong position on this. And so it's, it's a very weird dynamic in a way that like you need to be, um, you need to be the, the most interesting person for them to want to talk to. You don't want to go and beg and ask for an intro and so on, which is easy to say and hard to do, right? Uh, but my advice to you is trying to, um, to feel confident about like your business and really feel like you, if you're not 100% convinced that you're the thing, why should they? And so it's really like, if you're the most convinced and you're like, all the investors that were not interested, I was just like, fine, good for you. It's, it's, it's bad for you. But like I have other things and I'm pretty sure like on this, it's a loss for you. And like, that's the approach I feel like you should take because if you're not thinking this way, there's no reason they should think about it this way, but you're good. Yeah. You, you hit it on the nail in terms of like uh, the difficulty of managing that perspective because you know, as much as behind the scenes, you might really need the money or might really, really want the money. But, you know, when you come off as either desperate or kind of, you know, needing the money, it just is such a detract, you know, de uh, detractor for, for VCs to kind of show interest and, and want to participate in your round. And, you know, advice I get to founders all the time is never rebuttal. If they give you a no, politely accept it and move on your, your very way, like trying to fight for them to change their mind never works and burns the bridge. And then you're talking about the guy that, you know, or person that you know, begged for the money or, you know, didn't present well, and it leaves like a bad taste in their mouth uh, to where they, you know, you won't get referrals, you won't be talked up. Uh, and it can, you know, dramatically hinder your ability to go out and raise, you know, down the road if, you know, you're kind of having that combative or defensive uh, approach in your fundraise. It's much better to be like, hey, thanks for the time. Really appreciate it. You know, maybe we'll see each other down the road. That's a way healthier way to, to communicate yeah. with investors.